Hey guys, it's Rob Sipek with Paperless X, a channel that is dedicated to helping you find the right applications for your education, business, productivity, creativity, and lifestyle. In today's video, we will be going through everything you need to know about Google Docs for the iPad. Google Docs is a word processing app from Google. It is free and available on any device if you have a Google account. Your documents are automatically saved to Google Drive. When you first open the application, the landing page shows your most recently opened documents. Starting from the top left corner, you have a three bar icon for the navigation left sidebar. Search bar to quickly find your documents instead of navigating through everything in the application. Folder icon to access your Google Drive, share it with me and start documents. And your Google account details in this window. To create a new document, tap the plus icon on the bottom right corner of the landing page. You can either choose template or create new document. Google Drive has templates for CVs, letters, education, work, legal, and these are quite useful when you're not sure where to start. Now let's create a new document. Your working space is very simple. Google Docs has two toolbars. The one directly above your document is a quick access toolbar. You can access many more features on the toolbar under this A icon. On the quick access toolbar, you can do the following. Make your text bold, italic, underline, strike out, change the color of your text, and highlight. You don't get a lot of options for colors in Google Docs, but you have a decent range to pick from. Highlighting in the application is a two-step process that is quite an inconvenience. You have to select your text and choose a color for the highlight. Most of us use one highlighting color, so it's not really necessary to pick a color every time you highlight something. You can align your text to the left, center, or right side. You can add numbered and unnumbered lists. The indentation tool helps you create hierarchies in your lists. Both the bullet point and numbered lists have three different bullet point and numbering types. You can also indent paragraphs if you like. The A icon has additional features to the ones you get on the quick access toolbar. You can edit your text or paragraphs. Now we're going to focus on the features we've not talked about yet. So this is additional to what you find on the quick access toolbar. Under text, you have superscript and subscript. You can style your text and Google Docs has some fixed presets for normal text, headings, title, subtitle. These are set for you and you can't change them and adjust them in any way. You can change the font and Google Docs has a few but diverse fonts to choose from. You can increase or decrease the font size for your text and clear formatting for your selected section. You can justify your text to straighten the edges of both sides of your paragraph. You can add more unnumbered and numbered styles for your lists. Lastly, you can adjust line spacing for your paragraph. When you select some text in Google Docs, you get the option to cut, copy, paste, add comment, and insert link. Every time you select text in the application, these options pop up and they can be quite annoying when you don't need them. Sometimes you just want to highlight or underline something without this distracting pop-up. When you tap insert link, you can add some text and link in the pop-up window that appears on the right side of your screen. In the text box, you can describe your link and it replaces the text in the document. This text box is useful to help you find some articles in your Google Drive and on the web. This feature is incomplete on the iPad. You only get a maximum of two articles from Google Drive and one search result from the web not that useful unless you already have your own link that you just want to paste that you've copied from somewhere else that is a more useful way of using this feature on the ipad you can also link to headings and bookmarks in your document and once you have created your link you can 
open the link, edit link, remove link, select, select all, paste, and add comment. You can add comments to your selected text, which is useful when you're collaborating on documents with other people. Add lets you tag people from your Gmail, practically anyone whose Gmail you know. And you can even assign tasks to different people. All the comments in Google Docs are highlighted orange. You can tap on them to reply. Or Mark has done the tasks assigned to you. To close a conversation in the comments, tap the tick icon to resolve the comment and remove the highlighter. You can reassign tasks to someone else by tagging them in the reply to a task that has been assigned to you in the document. Even when it's not assigned to you, you can still reassign it to someone else. You can also edit and get shareable link for your comment. Google Docs sends notifications to your emails concerning any changes in your comments and assignments. Even after you have resolved your comments, the application keeps a history of them so you can revisit and reopen them at any time. You can insert images from photos, from camera, or drag and drop into the application. We had a bit of trouble with some images failing to insert using the plus icon, but had no issues with dragging and dropping images. For the iPad, drag and drop seems to work better when inserting your images. On the quick access toolbar, you can style the border of your image to determine border color, border weight, border dash, where you get three border type options, text wrap, and you can decide the margins around your image and the position for your image, whether you want it to move with text or remain fixed. Turn on print layout to enable the ability to resize and rotate your image. Google Docs doesn't crop your images though, so make sure it's already cropped when you bring it into the application. They should have a cropping feature. You can insert tables into your notes. Creating a table in the application is very simple. You can edit a column, a row, or the whole table at once. And these are the following things you can do with your tables. You can delete row or column, delete table, add a column before or after the selected one, add a row below or above the selected one, merge rows and columns, Change borders for rows, columns, or the whole table, and you can determine border color, border width, and border dash like you can with your images. Add fill color, and you can determine the minimum row height and column width. Most of the editing options for your tables under the A icon are similar to what you get on the quick access toolbar. You won't really be needing the A icon to edit your tables. You can insert a horizontal line. A page break without print layout is difficult to appreciate because it doesn't visibly move your text to the next page. To fully understand what a page break does, we have covered this in the video we did on the six useful features for Microsoft Word, and we will have a link to that in the description down below. To see your page breaks more clearly in Google Docs, you need to turn on print layout mode to create distinct pages in your document. You can then easily navigate through your pages to apply page breaks. In print layout, you can decide how your content is laid out. Your print layout could have one, two, or three columns for which you can adjust the column spacing. You can add line between columns and choose the column direction. When you add page numbering, the document automatically turns on print layout mode if it wasn't already in that mode. Your page numbers can be on one of four possible locations. Footnotes lets you add comments and citations to your document. In Google Docs, they're simple to use. The feature also automatically turns on print layout and your footnote is inserted at the bottom of your page with the note reference mark. In Google Docs, you can add bookmarks to sections of your documents for several reasons. For yourself, 
to find a section with much ease later. A bookmark adds a small blue ribbon to the section you bookmark. For hyperlinking to other sections of your document. And also for sharing specific sections on your documents with other people. Google Docs creates a URL for that bookmarked section, which you can copy link to share with other people and save them the time they would otherwise waste navigating through the document. You can insert a table of contents if your document has headings. It can either be with page numbers or with blue links. If you add more headings, you can update your table of contents. And still talking about the table of contents, you can easily access this table of contents here on the right by tapping this icon and you can easily navigate through your documents without necessarily creating a table of contents or adding a table of contents to your document. The three dots icon has quite a number of things you can do. You can turn on print layout, which we've already spoken about. You can suggest changes. When collaborating on a document, suggesting changes is better than editing the document. Google Docs changes the font color for suggestions to green to make them stand out from the rest of the content. The app strikes out words you delete from the text. When someone makes suggestions, you can view them and decide whether or not you want to accept them. And you can even add a reply to them. Document Outline helps you navigate through your document faster. You can create it from your headings, titles, and bookmarks. You can remove headings from the outline and add them back. Go to the heading and add to document outline. Find and replace is not very useful on the iPad. It is possible to search and replace multiple words. However, on the iPad, it is not specific enough to effect exact changes. Features like exact match would improve this feature on the iPad. Explore allows you to search the web, potentially link URLs to your text. You can research and explore topics and ideas without leaving Google Docs. The app lets you search for images, but you can't insert them into your notes. Word count tells you the number of words and characters in your document. Page setup determines your page's orientation, which could be portrait or landscape. Shows all the page sizes that are supported in Google Docs, and Google Docs supports quite a lot of page sizes. Margins can be narrow, default, wide, or custom. You can change your page color. Details tells you more information about your document, its type, location, size, storage used, owner, who has access to it, and all that. The application just records the activity of the document, showing who did what at different times, but you can't interact with this information in any way. It would be quite useful if the application could use this as a way to track the different versions of the document. Share lets you collaborate on documents with colleagues by adding their email addresses or sharing a link. When you share a link, anyone with that link can see the document. Google Docs lets you share a document with up to 200 people and half of them, which is 100 people, can edit the document at the same time, which is really a lot. Adding people via email gives you more control over the permissions you grant your colleagues. The person you collaborate with can either be a viewer, commenter or editor. An editor has the most permissions, they can change or delete the document and add more collaborators. When an editor deletes a document, you lose it too even if you're the owner. A commenter can comment and suggest changes to the document and a viewer can only view the document and they only have the ability to delete just their copy of the document from their Google Drive. You can add a message when inviting someone to collaborate with you. You can turn on link sharing to make your document available to anyone with the link. Even when your link sharing is turned off, viewers, commenters, and editors can still copy the link. The person they share it with, if it's turned off, can't open the document. They don't have access to the document. You can send a copy of the document as a PDF or Word document to any app that supports those formats. 
Just a small tip, if you're ever in an application that doesn't allow you to export documents out of it directly, try printing out that document and this will give you options to export that document out of that application. You can save as Word or make a copy of the document. Turn on available offline to view, edit, and comment on your documents offline. And of course, those changes get updated when you come online. You can star file to easily access it on the landing page. Now let's go through the organization of your documents in Google Docs. When you open the application, you always land on recents. And this can be displayed as lists or thumbnails. You can rearrange the documents according to name, last modified, last modified by me, and last opened by me. So the people icon indicates collaboration. The star icon is for starred documents. The number icon shows follow-ups, which is assignments and suggested changes. The underlined tick icon means your document is available offline. You get more options to interact with your documents on the three dots icon. Most of these features are available in your workspace, but it is useful to have them on the home page so you don't have to open your documents if you just want to access that one thing you want to do with your document. The sidebar is for navigating through your documents. For all of them, you can decide how your documents are displayed, but each option has a unique navigation filter in addition to the basic four that you find in your recents. So for your starred documents, the special feature is storage used. For shared with me, it is shared date. And you don't have any special features for offline documents. Google Docs has a recycle bin, so when you accidentally delete something, you have 30 days to restore it. Settings help you switch between Google accounts, make recent files available offline, View default apps. Pick a theme which could be light, dark, or system default. Google Docs supports true dark mode, which is to be expected of any word processing app. It doesn't support multiple instances or scribble. Google Docs is a simple yet powerful word processing app for the iPad. It packs just the right amount of features most users would need for creating documents on the iPad. And that brings us to the end of this video. Let us know what word processing app you were using and why. We hope you guys liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Let us know what other types of applications you'd like us to cover on this channel. Fantastic human, thank you for watching. See you in the next video.